Good morning, everyone. So glad to see you. You know, um, this song is saying, all I need is you. And it's true. If you're depressed, the scripture says this, the joy of the Lord is my strength. What that means, you could get strength today. If you have a broken relationship and you have a broken heart, is what you need is God. The Bible says that He heals the broken hearted. And He could even restore something that's broken. He could do it. You need God. Or maybe you're sick and you really have a lot of pain. I believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus went around healing, comforting, encouraging, easing people's pain. So let's believe that today that you'd have an encounter with that love and realize what I need is God. I don't need a drug. I don't need a drink. I don't need her to come back. I need God. Right? And I'm so proud of every one of you that are here because to be here on a Sunday, which is the first day of the week, is saying that God is a priority. And there's a promise for you as you continue making God a priority. It means you're putting him first. First day of the week, I'm going to give some time to God. I got 168 hours to do whatever I need to do, but the first two hours, hour and a half of that week, I'm giving to God. And God promises this. If you just put me first, seek first me, my kingdom, this is what I'll do. I'll add everything to you. I'll add your kids back to you. Come on. I'll add the finances. I'll add joy back to you, peace back to you. And you know what that means? Is that maybe you're so busy chasing the things that you've lost or the, thing that, or the things that you think you need that God says, I can't help you because you're chasing after the thing instead of chasing after your answer, which is God. He goes, and if you chase after me, I promise you, I'll give you all the, I'll just add, you'll be like a magnet. I'll just give him right back to you. Give God some praise that he's a God that loves us, that cares about us. And all I need is God. It's so true. Now, this week, you know, we, we've had a good week. And, and this, every week we're doing like really great things. And one of the things that's happening right now in Kenya, for some of you guys know, we, we've adopted an orphanage in Kenya that was actually abandoned. The orphanage was abandoned. And around two, three years ago, we took over that orphanage and those kids in that orphanage eat, they're clothed, they have the roof over their head because all of us, the offering that you just gave, a portion of it goes to them every single month. This is what that orphanage did a couple months ago. That orphanage opened up a church. That, that those orphans, are now the hope for the community. How many of you, that's a great idea. Now, now, not only did we open up a church, we built a church from the ground up. And right now they're finishing up, putting the roof in that, in that, in that church. That church, a building is there because we built it. But this week, something really cool happened. This right here is a cafe, Cityway Cafe, that... The orphanage just opened up right next to a, a, a college and they're going to make pizza and they're going to have coffee and and one of the members of parliament went there on their grand opening and the food was so good. He goes, I'm going to have you cater my next event. Now, what's the purpose of this cafe? We built it. Our church built that. What's the purpose? So they could learn how to be self-sufficient. So let me see. Is there another picture? Let's show another picture. All, the, all these young young adults they graduated from the foster home and now they're going to be running their own business come on let's give the lord a hand they're running their business they're business people that's so awesome so this is what we're doing we're built we're taking care of them 
but we're showing them that they can take care of themselves. And it was so cool. They're going to be making, we, we bought an oven, oven to make pizza and there's nobody that makes pizza around there. So we're going to be the Domino's. Yes. <laughs> Cityway Pizza. That pizza is good. Right. Also, this week was really cool. Um, our children on Thursday, we challenged all of our teenagers and children to take their Bibles to school to stand up for Christ. And this is what happens. Our kids went to their junior highs and they went to their elementary schools and they bought their Bibles to school this Thursday. How many know that's pretty cool getting young people to bring their Bibles and say, this is who I represent, Christ. That's Cajon High School right there. They're bringing their Bibles. And the next thing we're going to do is a day, we're going to have a day, bring a Bible and give a Bible day. So we're going to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Come on, with our kids. You might not be able to go over there, but our kids can. Is God good? Come on, let's give God some praise to the good God. Also, one more thing. We're giving you an invite card. You're invited. You have this. has a QR code on the back. You could give this to anybody all week long. And, and we're going to have eventually a booth out there with just these, these little invite cards. So you can have a business card from the Way World Outreach. And you could go everywhere. Here, you're invited. And the QR code, what it does, it takes them to our last sermon. So this sermon... They could go right to it and check it out themselves. And if God's speaking to them, you know what's going to happen. They're going to come. You don't have to do the work. Just give them a little card. And they're going to go right to our YouTube channel and just subscribe. So you're going to have this. And also, we have a drama. I'm telling you, invite people to pit. And then uh, that's on the 24th and the 31st. We have a, actually, we're going to have harvest here. Bring your friends and family here. Drama people. We're going to get saved. While people are hitting the streets, we're going to bring the streets here. We're going to have candy for the kids, but we're going to have a drama that's going to save souls. Come on, you don't want to miss the production. They've been working real hard on it. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this moment that we could all come together. Right now, stadiums are full. And I just thank you, Lord, your house is full too. It's time to go out there and get the hurting and the broken and bring them in to this wonderful, loving, powerful environment where they could get healing, hope, forgiveness, a new beginning. Speak to us today as we talk about relationships. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Awesome, you may be seated. We've been talking about relationship skills and, and last week we talked about the most important skill is just listening. And if you were here last week, we talked about some of the skills or habits that we need to develop to become skilled listeners. And one of them was Drop everything, drop your phone, turn off the TV, get rid of all distractions, and look at the person in the eye you're communicating with. That's called good communication. There was something I said last week is that you've not earned the right to speak until you understand what they said. And so, so many times we are busy getting ready to say something, and we almost think like our conversations are arguments, and I'm going to win this one. And, and we have that kind of attitude, like, I don't care what you're saying, so therefore I will interrupt you in the middle of your sentence, which is bad listening skills, interrupting others. Uh, me and Lisa had to practice some of this this week. How many, had to, how many learned this last week and it was like, oh my gosh, I got a, I'm a really bad listener. And this happened just yesterday. I told Lisa, I go, Lisa, can you go ahead and... Um, I, have my, my, I had a Bose speaker. I have a speaker that, that I walk around with in my truck because my truck doesn't have, doesn't have a, a, a Wi-Fi or whatever. I just, it doesn't connect to the radio, whatever it is. So I got my little portable little radio, my speaker, and, and I left it in the car. And I told Lisa, could you go get the, get the, get the speaker? And this is what I heard. Uh-huh. And I go, that's good. She's giving me feedback. She got it. Right. And, and but it was like an hour later and there's still no speaker. So and then I went to Lisa and now we're going to be talking about this week. We're going to start talking about verbal communication. So it's not just listening. It's guarding your mouth and not just letting whatever wants to fly out of your mouth. Let it fly out. And wherever it lands, it lands and tough luck. Right. And I, I just felt like I, I wanted like. I wanted to tell Lisa, La, you don't listen. And we just, I, I felt like this, we just covered this whole thing about listening. And you didn't listen. But, but 
since we're talking about being slow to speak, we'll talk about that in a second. I, I just couldn't let that out because letting that out would not want her to pay attention to me. And maybe she's tuning me out because I maybe badger her, tear her down and start preaching to her. And it's her way of being able to deal with all the extra words that aren't building her. So I had to go back and I just had to keep quiet because I didn't want to say something that's hurtful, that's wrong, that shouldn't be coming out of my mouth. And I go, honey, it's my fault because I, I asked you to get the speaker and she says, I didn't hear you. I didn't go, oh, I thought you heard me though. I'm not trying to be nice. I thought you heard me though. And she goes, no, I didn't hear you. I go, oh, okay, okay. Well, that was my fault because we should have had a summary statement at the end of our conversation. And I should have said, do you understand what I just said? <laughs> We should have got some feedback. She said, it would have been great if I said, honey, did you just hear me? And she would have said, yeah, I heard you. You want me to get your bow speaker from the truck? I go, exactly. Thank you, honey. But she never, I never made sure that she understood what I was saying. I was speaking and somehow she wasn't listening. It's her fault. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but the idea is now we're going to be talking about verbal communication. And this is what in James chapter one, verse 19, this is what it says. Understand this. When James begins his statement in the scripture, he's saying, I'm speaking, but I want you to make sure you understand what I'm saying. I'm not speaking to speak. I'm speaking to be understood. And this is what he says, my beloved brothers and sisters, let everyone be quick to hear or listen. Be a careful and thoughtful listener. Last week we covered being a careful and thoughtful listener is just leaning in a little bit. It might be taking notes. You're leaning in because you're putting effort in because I don't want to miss a word because the words that are spoken can change my life forever, my relationships forever. It could save my family. It could save my marriage. I want to listen because I'm here to understand, learn, and apply. So he goes, be quick to hear, but he goes on to say, slow to speak. A speaker of carefully chosen words. This is what he's saying. Slow down your words and start thinking before you talk. Because maybe the words you're ready to let out of your mouth is going to offend, hurt, and destroy someone. So think before you talk. And this is what I've learned, that usually when I'm ready to speak, especially if something gets a little bit heated, I'll speak out of my emotion, but I'm not speaking out of my wisdom or I'm not speaking out of the Spirit of God. Why don't, you, why don't we practice this? Before you speak, give yourself three seconds so the Holy Spirit can speak to you. Because I've learned this, that the first reaction is usually my reaction. What I'm ready to say. And the second voice is God. And if I would just wait three seconds and be slower to speak, I could start speaking what God is saying. And what God is saying is wisdom. It's encouraging. It's kind. It's loving. It's not harsh. It's not rude. It's not judgmental. It's not critical. That's the truth. So I have to slow down what I'm ready to say. So today I want to just answer just a simple question. Next week, it's going to be awesome. Next week, today's going to be awesome, but next week's going to be more awesomer. I know it's not a word. English teacher right now is like, oh my gosh. No, but the idea is it's going to be better than even today. This is what's going to happen next week. I'm going to give you nine rules for effective verbal communication. That's going to be next week. Today, we're going to cover the why. Why is it important to get skills or, or verbal skills for our relationship. So why are relationship and verbal skills so important? Why is it so important? Number one, 
it takes relationship skill to win souls for eternity. Now, this is really important because if you're a believer, you're not just here to live your Christian faith out. You are here to be an influence in this world. And no one's going to follow you if they don't even like you. Yes, understand. If we don't even know how to talk to someone, why would they want to even listen to us? No, they don't want to listen to the truth. No, no, maybe they don't want to listen because we're rude. We're gossipers. We're slanderers. We cuss people out. And would it be crazy, and maybe it is and for some of us, that you said you use God's name as a cuss word more this week than a praise word? But and then we want people to follow us, to know Jesus. Like, follow me to go, no, you're crazy. Like, you got a double personality. You got your Sunday morning, hallelujah, look, and then you got your regular everyday conversation. And it's right now you're sending a double message. I don't quite know what you're saying. Part of communication is that we don't give a double message. That means if we're communicating that God's a loving God, let's make sure we're loving people. So winning souls. Look at this in Proverbs 1130. It takes relationship skill to win souls for eternity. So it takes skill. Someone say it takes skill. In Proverbs 1130 says this, the fruit of the consistently righteous is a tree of life. The fruit just means the results of those who are consistently godly or like God or like Christ. It's a tree of life. And he who is wise captures and wins souls for God. He gathers them for eternity. So who's the person that captures and wins souls for God and gathers them for eternity? It's the wise. Someone say the wise. Wise means those who are skillful, learned, or artful. You know, relationship, verbal communication is an art. But I also say with this, it's a skill that must be learned. No one has to teach you how to tell somebody off. Yesterday, I was at DJ's on I think 40th, to eat some breakfast. And all of a sudden, I hear a lady scream at her top of her lungs with every cuss word you could ever imagine in the parking lot. Now I'm talking about verbal communication, and I know this, it's so easy to just judge her and start speaking death over her and just start saying something like this. There it goes, San Bernardino, only in San Bernardino. But I have to stop myself because I have to put a guard over my mouth. I, gotta, I can't just let stuff come out of my mouth because what I'm saying out of my mouth, is it going to be encouraging? Is it going to build her or is it going to destroy her? Well, she's not hearing you. It doesn't matter. I'm saying it. So I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. She's screaming, screaming. It was like for a while. It was some great car passed by her. Then the guy started saying, all kinds of F words to her. And she's screaming at him. And I'm like, what? But God says, be quiet. You don't, you, you, right now, let me talk to you, Marco. So there was a guy that came up that was sitting right, standing right next to her. And I go, what happened? He goes, well, some guy, older gentleman in a Buick LeSabre, drove by her and looked at her 13-year-old daughter, like looking her up and down. And she was mad. I go, oh, okay. Now I get why she was mad. But then Lisa comes up to me and she goes, Marco, she was probably so mad because it reminded her of her abuser when she was 13 years old. 
So this anger that she has probably has nothing to do with that guy looking at her daughter. It reminds her of every man that's ever abused her her whole life. And what she needs is some love. She needs some mercy. She needs some understanding. She needs some prayer. Come on. She don't need a Christian to tell her stop acting so ghetto. She needs someone to understand her and say, baby, I know you have some pain, but I've gone through it too. And the God that healed me, he can heal you. I hear your pain, baby. We got to get skilled. We're not going to win people to the Lord through being rude, talking too much, offending them, just saying words that are hurtful. They will not receive our message. And there's nothing wrong with our message. But sometimes there's something wrong in the way we deliver this life-given message. They need someone that speaks to them with empathy, love, encouragement, support, and truth. You're not called to be an Old Testament prophet. I'm a prophet. And you, you know what happens? You're hiding behind that. And you're offending everybody through your Old Testament prophecies. You're going to die if you don't listen to me. We're here to bring some good news. People already know they're jacked up. People already know they're addicted. People already know their families fall apart. People already know that they've made some bad decisions. They need some hope. Then you need to let them know that there's a God that still loves them, that still believes in them. It doesn't matter what you've done. He died on the cross for you so you can be forgiven and have a brand new life. Someone say good news. So he who is wise captures and wins souls for God, he gathers them for eternity. This week, I went to a car dealership again. Why should pastor, what are you doing at a car dealership? I thought God delivered you from that. I know, I just keep going back. It was time to go reach my people. So right around 9.30 at night, I just finished. Uh, I, I forgot what it was. I, but it was, it was an old ministry event. And... And I go with Lisa, and I told her, let's stop by a car dealership. It's around 9.30 at night. And, you know, she's just a loving wife. She goes, okay. So it's 9.30 at night. So we, we land on this car. I really think the car dealership's going to be closed, and I'm just going to be able to walk the lot, look at their cars, because Abriana needs a car, so I was kind of looking for her. It's my excuse to be in a car lot. Remember the good old days, right? So, so, I, so I get on the lot, they're not closed, and this young man comes up to me with full of enthusiasm. He begins to talk to me, and I'm telling him, I told him I'm looking for a car for my daughter. This is the price range I'm looking for, and then I'll bring her. If I find anything I like, I'll bring her over to take a look at the car, and that's the truth. That's what I was there for. And he began to talk to me, and before I leave, I tell him, also, I want you to know I'm a pastor of a church, and because I'm a pastor of a church and because I'm a believer, you know I got to invite you. Because I, can't, I, cannot, I cannot not invite you. So I gave him a card. I go, I want to invite you. He, um, to our, we have our service at 9 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock on Wednesday night. And then he goes, I'm a Muslim. I go, that's fine. I go, are you a practicing Muslim or a Muslim by name? He goes, just by name. <laughs> I go, that's what I thought, man. I go, what you need is a relationship with God. And that's, I'm not here to give you a religion. So I'm not here to argue Muslim, Christian. I'm here to give you a relationship with God. And the truth is, everybody needs Jesus. And I told him a little about my story. And by the time I was done with him, like five minutes later, he said this. He goes, can I, he goes, can I go ahead and share this with my general sales manager? I go, yeah. He goes, I want him to talk to you. You're very interesting. I never met somebody like you. I go, Good, let's do it. But he was so serious that two minutes after I left the car dealers or five minutes, he calls the general sales manager in L.A. and he tells him, I just met a guy I want you to meet. 
He goes, I set an appointment for Friday. Can you make it around one o'clock? Well, this Friday, I, I, I did. I, I went over there. They don't know what the meeting is going to be about, but I do. I'm going to go ahead and show them the love of God. I'm going to go ahead and, come on, give them a testimony of what God can do. I'm going to give them a testimony of what a live church can do in the community. So I'm sitting there. I go in. He's a Muslim too. So now I'm in a meeting with two Muslims. What do I do? Well, how I communicate is going to determine how this is going to go. Because if they don't like me, I can't bridge them to my Jesus. I talk to them. I love them. I share the good news with them. By the time they're done, we're all hugging. And he goes, how can we help you? Like, I really want to help. I go, look, I'm not here right now for your help. I'm here to build a relationship. But maybe down the road, we could partner up with something. But I want to let you know, I'm here to make some friends. He goes, oh, man, you're for real, huh? I go, yeah, I'm for real. You know why they say you're, you're for real? Because there's nothing that's a greater proof that God is in you than the love of God in you. Come on, we're here to love some sinners into the kingdom of heaven. So number one, number one, look at number one. It takes a, rela it's a relationship skill to win some souls for eternity. Number two, the unity that we display in our relationships with one another is one of the major proofs to the unbeliever that Jesus is Lord. Our relationships display the love of God. After all, what we preach is relationships, reconciliation between God and man and each other. Our relationship with each other as brothers and sisters is a big part of the message that we preach. They are mostly looking to see how we talk with each other. How do you communicate? Look at the scripture in John 17. Now, Jesus, this is a recorded prayer of Jesus. Jesus is praying, and who's he praying for? He's praying for his disciples that he has presently at that time. But he's also praying for every single future believer that will ever exist. You know what this is including? It's including you and I, this prayer. But look at the prayer. I do not pray for these alone. It is not for their sake only that I make this request. But I pray, but I also, but also for all those who will ever believe and trust in me through their message. Check this out. No one will trust in Jesus without hearing the message through you and I. Now, we not only preach a message verbally, we preach a message with nonverbal cues. What do I mean by that? We preach through example, show and tell. It's show and tell. It's not just tell. And this is what the scripture is saying. I'm praying for every single person that will ever believe through their message. Our lives have a message. Let's see what he says. That they, this is a prayer, that they all will be one. That they all will be what? You know what that means? Jesus is praying that you and I as believers would be united. There's a spirit that's trying to divide us and conquer us. And this spirit has been more prevalent in these last days than I've ever seen it. Mask, no mask. Vaccine, no vaccine. 
It's Democrat, Republican. We just don't end. And there's a problem. We're more full of the division that's in this world than we are full of the unity that's in the spirit. Before you're a Democrat, before you're a Republican, you are a child of God here to win souls for the kingdom of heaven. We don't destroy our relationships for a personal opinion. Well, pastor, I get it. But are you for the vaccine or not? Because if you're for the vaccine, this is the Antichrist church. I just know what I heard on YouTube. Did you take the vaccine, pastor, or didn't you? Because if you didn't take the vaccine, I already know this, you're irresponsible. How do we win? When we're more influenced by CNN News and Fox News than we are through the, uh, by the word of God. The goal, I want you to, the goal is none of that. The goal is that we be united because there's a purpose. Come on, unity is the goal. Come on, agreement is the goal. It's not fighting. It's not division. It's none of that stuff. But look at this. Look what the Bible says. That they all may be one, that we, that we may be one. Just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. So the level of oneness that he's saying, I want them to be one like, this is standard, like you and I are one. That they'll be just like that. That they will not be able to tell the difference. The Bible says this, when you've seen Jesus, he goes, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because me and the Father are one. That means what I say, what the Father says, I do what I've seen the Father do. There's no difference. We're one. Be careful, and I, I'm saying, be careful that you're not so op opinionated that you sacrifice your oneness in the Lord. Well, I think, and my opinion is, okay, look at, let's see, let's read, let's read, let's read, let's read. That they also may be one, just as you, you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe without any doubt that you sent me. Now, this is deep. This scripture is actually saying that the world's proof that Jesus is real is our unity. Could it be that we're preaching till we're red in the face to our kids, but all they see it's just arguing and fighting, and they're thinking, your relationship has not changed since you've gone to church. And the only proof that I know that there's a God is that he brings you guys together, and you begin to be united. If I don't see any unity, I don't see Jesus. Well, why, well, why you leave the church? Well, you know, I just feel like I'm not being fed anymore. So, so that's your story, that the church wasn't good enough for you? Oh, yeah, and there were some brothers over there, you know, they think they're better than everybody, you know, and they just took my seat. They know I sit there. <laughs> Can't believe them. They're so rude. You know, when I first started going, they were super loving, but then as I, st I started going a little bit more, I found out there's some witches in that place. And I think one of them is actually a real witch. She's just in the front. In the front, you'll just see her. She's a real long black hair. She wears black all the time. It's her. You start making up all kinds of stuff. And you know what the sad thing is? You're poisoning your own family. You're poisoning the world. You're poisoning everybody. And they're saying that that's, the kind, that's how down you guys are for each other. Come on. We got to be loyal to each other. And when we're in front of each other, when we're about, come on. When, we're, when so we don't talk behind people's back, we don't gossip, we don't slander. That's what the devil does. It's so easy to talk about people. It's so easy to be critical. Like some of us think like our job, like we're not a food critic. We're a Jesus critic. 
Like my job is just to make sure people are Jesusified. Be careful. We're not here to criticize each other. We're not here to judge each other. We, come on, we are here to encourage each other. We are here to build each other. We are here to, get, come on, we got to have, we got to be loyal. Come on, we got to be loyal. We don't go home and have pastor for lunch. We don't go and start talking about brothers and sisters. This is not why we came to church. We came to church to become more like Jesus. We came to church, come on, to love one another. And I know all of us have issues, but you got issues, I got issues. So let's just forgive each other and let's start talking about a, a bright future that every one of us have. I might not be perfect, but I know this. I'm not the person I used to be. God is doing something in me. Don't judge the unfinished product because God chose me and I'm grown every single day. See me next year, I'll grow a little bit more. So they'll only know that Jesus was sent when they see our what? Unity. When they see our what? And the last reason, why are relationships and verbal skills so important? Number three, we cannot be in relationship with God if we're not loving each other. Our relationship with God is tied to our relationship with each other. How we speak and treat each other is top priority to God. To know God is to love, not to judge, slander, gossip, scream at each other, name call, curse each other out. Curse each other out. When is this happening? Sometimes in our homes. I mean, is your home a rated R home? Because of the language? It's not even PG-13. It's just rated R. Because the words that are being said to each other are so dirty. And how can we say we love God when we're hating on each other with our words. And don't think that you're going to treat God because you can't. I want you to get this. How we treat each other is proof that we know God. Look at the scripture. In 1 John 4, it's getting real quiet up here in this Catholic church today. <laughs> getting quiet. Got a lot of sinners need to confess. Beloved, let us unselfishly love and seek the best for one another. The goal is not to seek the best for ourselves, but the goal is to seek the best for one another. You know what that means? All my gifts, all my talents, who I am, my resources, God's given them not to be self-serving. Everything I have is to serve you. May our marriages be more like that. But look what the scripture says. May our relationship in the church be more like that. For love is from God. And everyone who loves others is born of God and knows God. Everyone that, everyone that loves others is born of God and knows God through personal experience. The one who does not love has not become acquainted with God. Does not and never did know him. For God is love. He is the originator of love and it is an enduring attribute of his nature. So we serve a God that loves. We're going to have to learn how to display that love to a hurting world. They've seen enough hate. They've seen enough division. Let's not let the devil divide us anymore. Let's become skilled in our relationships, even in our home. It's okay that you have some bad days and it happens because we're growing, but don't accept it without making adjustments. Honey, I was rude. I apologize. 
the way I made you feel, the name calling, putting you down, using statements like this, you always, you never, you're always like, you never, you're the, you're the worst, oh my God, we'll never learn. And then we expect to have this wonderful life using all this destructive language. How, you gonna, how are we going to get our kids to go to another level if all we're doing is cursing them? You're lazy. You're dirty. You're stupid. You're never going to amount to nothing the way you're doing it. When are you going to ever learn, you hard head? And do you actually think all those words are going to produce something wonderful? And I know it's hard because some of us, that's all we knew when we grow up, grew up. And I, and I know for me sometimes it's hard to love because I wasn't showed how to love. But I, I know I now have a father that's loved me in my worst condition. And he's teaching me, Marco, come on, be more like me. Don't be like your 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 physical father be more like me I'll teach you how to love sinners in their worst condition because that's what I did for you I gave my best when you were giving me my word your worst and that God lives in you and me if we just be aware it all starts with your mouth this is a scripture this is the last scripture I'm going to read and it's to husbands, but I think it's to all of us. And this is the point. We cannot have an effective relate prayer life and treat our wives with disrespect and dishonor. Look what this first Peter 3, 7 says this. In the same way, you husbands live with your wives in an understanding way with great gentleness and tact. I'm going to tell you this. I remember there was a day when me and Lisa were going out with boyfriend and girlfriend. And I had so much jealousy and anger and rage in me. I remember knocking on her screen door. She had one of those real strong screen doors you couldn't break. It was like iron. They're trying to keep the devil out. And I was the devil. As a youth pastor. Not before I came to Christ, in Christ. And I remember knocking on that door and I said, let me in. She goes, no. I said, let me in. She goes, no. I'm not going to let you. I don't trust you. The way you're talking right now, I don't trust you being in this house. I go, what? You don't trust me? I'm the one that should not be trusting you. So all this is happening. So I'm like knocking our screen. Open the door. And she just sat there. No. And then she started crying. I'm not letting you in. She goes, and then she said something real crazy. She goes, if you keep this up, I'll call the police on you. I what? What? <laughs> because the idea was, I was out of control. And I was not treating Lisa with honor, respect, value. She's God's daughter. And I was trying to punish her for her past. Because it was jealousy driven. I was asking the dumbest questions in the world. Did he love anybody else but me? <laughs> I mean, when you're jealous, you have a stupid question. What? I mean, how could she answer that? Well, no, you're the only one ever loved. Liar! You're just saying that because you want me. There's nothing she could say. And this idea, God's telling me and you, if we don't learn how to treat each other right, this is what God is saying, there's no more ministry. 
And this is what God's saying. If you don't learn how to treat your wife and your husband and, and people in your life with honor, respect, and value and speak to them in love, this is what God is saying. Don't pray to me because I'm not going to answer your prayer because your relationships are just as important. Your relationship with me and your relationship with them is the same thing to me. Look what it says. This is it. Live with your eyes with under, an understanding way with great gentleness and tact. Gentle, not anger, gentleness. And with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship. As with someone physically weaker, since she is a woman. Show her honor and respect. Value and respect. As a fellow heir of the grace of life. What are you saying? Show her the respect and honor I, I gave you. I gave you grace. You know what grace means? Unmerited favor. I gave my best when you didn't deserve it. He goes, since I've given you that grace, I gave you eternal life, why would you not give grace to your wife, your kids, each other, so that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective? What he's saying is, if, if we don't learn how to love each other and treat each other right, God says your prayers will be weak. They'll be ineffective. You know what that means? You'll have a God I mean, you'll have a relationship with God without his power manifesting. Demons aren't going anywhere. When you're praying, there's no answer. And God is saying, you know why? I see the way you're talking to your wife and tearing her down. And then you come here acting like you didn't do it. And I'm concerned about that. So before I answer your prayer, I need you to hear me. If you don't learn how to respect and honor her and start speaking life over her, I'm not going to answer your prayers until you correct that. I know there's a great call on your life, but your first call is to love. Respect each other. And I'm talking to the ladies too, because we got some gangbanger ladies up in here. You're the one, like, where are you from? Just the right, living room. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Come on. There's some ladies right here, like, I mean, you're the one that's, like, crazy. Cussing them out, throwing stuff at them. He's just like, what can I do? Like, you're crazy. Don't call me crazy. I know, but look at you. But we're going to get this. How many learned this song here today? Come on. We're going to get this. Now, we're going to win some people to Jesus. We're going to start walking in unity. And we're going to realize our relationship with each other is our relationship with God. I love you. And there's nothing you can do to stop me from loving you. Because I'm loving you with the love of Christ. You could talk about me, and this is what I choose. I won't talk about you. Just won't do it. You could go ahead and hit me with your best shot. I made a choice. I'm going to turn the other cheek. Because I want to show you the love of Jesus. And maybe one day you'll be convinced that God is awesome when you see the love that I give you when you were acting unlovable. There's some people that you're ready to reach that are really mean, hard, difficult. But God says, don't you let them change your spirit, your approach. Don't mimic them. Follow my example. And I'll use you through the love that's in you to reach them. How many receive something from God today? Let's all stand up. You guys are a great crowd. I'm going to dismiss in just a second. <sighs> I'll tell you this, guys. I know how much pain I've caused my wife and sometimes my family by the things, careless things I've said out of my mouth. And I've learned this, that probably the roughest I've ever been with anybody is my own family. And God is saying that's unacceptable. You've got to stop. You've got to reach your world. We gotta overflow this place. 
And how we're going to do is we're going to win some people over. But the practice for all this love begins in the church and at home. We're going to love each other. We're not going to talk about each other. If someone comes with a complaint about a brother and sister, this is what you do. Let's go to them. Right now, let's solve this. But I'm not going to be sitting here hearing gossip about somebody. We're going to go talk to them, and we're going to settle this today. Because right now, we all need to grow. Let's fix this. Amen. I'm going to tell you this, church. I'm not perfect. I'm growing every day. Okay, I'm not, I'm, I tell you my business. I tell you my laundry. I told you this week I was out of line. Why do I tell you that? Because I'm growing too. Like this lesson, like, it's for me first. But this is what I do know. I'm not justifying my craziness. I'm repenting of it. God, make me more like you, Jesus. I want to reach people for Jesus for eternity. I want, I want to give proof that Jesus is alive by our unity. And then I want my relationship with God to be strong. So when I pray, he answers. I want to do that. So today, I'm going to give you an opportunity and everybody here. But if you're saying, Pastor, I want forgiveness today. I believe, I believe I've been harsh to my loved ones. Been aggressive. And I want forgiveness. I need God to change my heart. And for some of you, it's time to forgive people that hurt you. You've become so hard and rough because you don't want to get hurt again. So you're just angry and tough and like nobody's ever going to do that to me again. I promise you. I promise. They don't even know. You know who you're messing with? You know who, you know who I Do you know who I am? What family I come from? Do you, do you, do you know I go to where will I reach? What? <laughs> right? Stop. God says, vengeance is mine. Let me take care of your business. I know how to do it better than you do. Your job is just to love them. Forgive. Someone say forgive. Receive forgiveness. Give forgiveness. And without receiving the forgiveness of Jesus, which is unearned, you don't earn it. It's just you receive, ask for it, give it to you as a gift. Eternal life is not something you earn. It's something he just gives to you as a gift. I'll give you eternal life. I'll forgive you. I'll give you eternal life. And then I'll fill you with my Holy Spirit. Oh, my gosh. You're talking about God's Spirit filling your, your heart? And when your heart is full, filled with the Holy Spirit, you know what your heart's filled with? Love. Love is overflowing. Now you can go talk to the Muslims over there and not start World War IV. But you go over there and you love them into the kingdom of heaven. Them guys don't even know what they're messing with. Because the love of God is powerful. I'm meeting with a Hindu this week. A Hindu, I'm going to go to lunch with him. And I'm going to lead him to the Lord. I had a conversation, two, three or four conversations with him already. And he's, a, he's a leader in the community. And I talked to him. And this is what I do know. He loves me. So why does he love you? Because I have what they're looking for. Love. Truth. Wisdom. Skill. Effectiveness. Because I want what you have. Because I need my wife. She wants it too. I go, well, first they're going to meet with you. They're going to meet with your family. He goes, let's do it as soon as possible. He has money. He has things. But he's missing something. And that's Jesus. And I know he wants my Jesus because he likes me. So why does he like? What's, you have to, because what he likes in me is the Jesus in me. All I'm going to do is give him what he likes. Amen. Love, kindness, gentleness. Let's get rid of the gossip and the slander. Don't go into break rooms and talk about people. Stop it. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility now you fix people. Your responsibility is to love people. Amen? So, well, that sounds kind of weak. No, it's not weak. It takes a lot of strength to love some people. Come on. You have to love your enemies. That's hard. But that's Jesus, right? So if you're saying, Pastor, I want to be forgiven. Only if you're forgiven from your sins can you have a new life or eternal life or be a new person. Well, how can I be forgiven of my sins? I'll tell you why. 
because me and you sin, and there's punishment for every sin. Punishment. There's consequences. But God sent his son to be punished in our place. That's what the cross represents. So that means you could be forgiven because the price was paid. And this is what I want you to do. Receive forgiveness so you stop beating up yourself. Stop living under a guilt trip. You could be forgiven. Because if you don't receive forgiveness, this is what happens. You start living a life and you'll sabotage yourself. You just, I don't deserve to succeed. I don't deserve these good things in my life because I'm so aware of the wrong I've done. I want you to be aware of what God has done, what Jesus has done, and be forgiven. So you can forgive some people. If you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I want to be forgiven. I want to receive a new life. And also, I need to forgive some people. I need to start over today. I need to be forgiven, man. I've been harsh. I've been rough. I want forgiveness. And I want God to help me. Make me a new person. When I count three, I want you to raise your hands. One. Don't hold, don't hold your hand down. If God's speaking to you, respond. I want forgiveness. I want change. Couples, if you've been fighting and arguing like cats and dogs, come up here in a minute. Let's leave the cats and dog spirits out here. Leave them right here. And leave with a decision. We're going to be united. One. Two. And said, that's me. I want forgiveness. I want restoration. I want a new beginning. I want change. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. Raise your hands all over. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. See the hand. See the hand. Come on. I see those hands. I see the hand. See the hand. See the hand. See that. Come on. I want those to raise their hand. Do one more thing. I want you to see the hand way in the back. I want you to leave your seat. And I want you to say, I'm walking away from the anger. I'm walking away from the past. I'm walking away from the impatience. I'm walking away from the hurt. I'm walking away from the unforgiveness. Come forward real quick. If you raise your hand, come forward. Even if you didn't raise your hand, but I need change. I need God to change my heart. I got bitterness. I got, I'm edgy. I need God to help me. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, someone's giving their life to Jesus. Next week is going to be awesome. This Wednesday is going to be awesome. Love you guys. Love you. God bless you. Awesome. God bless you. Nice to see you, honey. Come on, recommit your life to the Lord. Somebody needs to recommit their life to the Lord. You, come on, something took you out of church. Something took you out of your relationship with God and your brothers and sisters. Time to come back home. Love you. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. Come on, people giving their lives to the Lord. All right. God bless you, proud of you. It takes a real man to do this, a real woman to do this. I, I want you to say, we're not strong when we're abusive. That's not strength. It's weakness. And just because someone's weaker than you and you're stronger than them doesn't mean you have the right to hurt them. You could change. I can change. I need help. Because I know, guys, ladies, without the Lord, I'm rough. I'm tough. And my words can be like a bulldozer, push people. It's without the Lord. But with the Lord, I could be loving, kind, an encourager, a builder. You know what that means? I bring value to people's lives. And we can do that. How? Jesus will help me. Okay? And ladies, if you have a husband that's been a little rough with you or a lot of rough with you, and they're here today, and they're making some change, forgive them. You see, they just need Jesus. We all do. And ladies, guys, if you got a wife that's a gangbanger, chasing around the house with a knife around, cut you, forgive her. May today be her day of change. Because a lot of the anger she has towards you has to do with some of the things you've done, but some of it has to do with Stuff that happened to her way before she met you too. Be understanding, loving, and kind. She needs your love. Okay, let's pray together, church. Guys, God's, God's going to hear your prayer because you're asking forgiveness. He's going to hear it.
So repeat after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me, Lord, for hurting people with my mouth, with my actions. Forgive me, Lord, for hurting you. I know that you sent your son to die on the cross to pay the price for all the wrong I've done. Forgive me. Set me free. Make me a new person. God, fill me now with your spirit. Make me a new person. Fill my heart with your unconditional love. I forgive everyone that has hurt me. I let them go now. I will no longer walk in anger, unforgiveness, bitterness. I choose to love even my enemies. I can do it through your help. I'm a new person and I receive the free gift of new life. From this day, fo from this day forward, I will follow you with the goal to be like you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand.